from Indigo at the O2. Three three minute rounds in the amateur strawweight division. Your referee in charge when the bell rings, Mr. Harry Selby. Straw action sponsored by Ice Rental 4x4. Lindsay Payne from Killies MMA in the blue corner. Her opponent, Kunski Fernandez from Great Britain top team in the red. Fernandez coming out with that straight right. Fernandez staying hard and heavy with the head. Got a pummel for the underhooks, though, to get a dominant position for the takedown. Payne looking to try to move Fernandez up against the cage. We saw this in warm ups. She was working with her coach on what to do in this exact position. Good job by Fernandez to get her back off the cage. But again, Payne brings her in. Yeah, she's working up against Kate, who's still with the warm up. She utilized this position that she tried to play with the inside trip to get the takedown. And she was looking to pop her head, but she's got the overhook on the wrong side to be able to get underneath it. She's going to have to elevate that underhook to get to that side in order to pop it. Okay, I can't say too loud because she's right in front of us, and that's coaching. <laughs> Good job, Fernandez. Circle away. Lindsay from the United States of America. It's fought in Northampton, I believe, Nick. Yeah, so I've seen he's got in on a good double, good hip by Fernandez, and she's got a deep wizard now, looking to cross face that head. And now she's framing it, but she's going for a ride. Good job by Lindsay to get over. Good hip by Fernandez. Lindsay's got to be careful that arm's trapped. Good job at Payne to pressure using her head. Payne staying low here though is going to give the affordance for triangles and arm bars if Fernandez walks the legs up. She can also frame on the head as well to create some distance potentially to get back to her feet. And Fernandez's small torso, it's not that difficult for her to be able to pull that leg up, try to get it over. And she's looking to catch one of the arms now. Good job, Payne. Scramble. Now Payne looking to stack her. Fernandez looking to try to protect that head as she circles in and again Payne to the back. One hook in, second hook in, being negotiated here from Payne. Back control. Fernandez going to kick off the cage if she needs to use it. Again, Payne looking to try to get one of those hands up under the chain. 15 seconds left, it's gonna be difficult. Fernandez doing a good job of protecting her chin inside here. Though. Lindsay Payne trying to free the arms here. Gloves make it a little bit difficult. She's gonna finish strong in the first round with back control over Fernandez. I mean, we had seen that Payne had been working up against the cage. She was able to get that takedown. Once she locked the hand, you know, she pretty much controlled the entire round. But Payne did a good job of not taking a lot of damage. But I like to see her throwing more solutions for her. She got stabbed because she had attempted to scramble, but Payne and stayed calm, kind of rolled with it. Round two on the way, painting the blue corner, Fernandez in the red. Both of Payne's wins came by TKO, ground pound TKO, in round two and three in a previous matchup, so two previous wins. So that's a credit to uh, Fernandez to be able to weather the storm. It doesn't take any decisive damage on the ground as of yet, but able to defend pretty good from her guard off of her back. And Fernandez doing a good job now, putting her head right up underneath Payne's chin. 
looking to try to keep that underhook. Nice knee up inside. Hangs in on what appears to be head and arm. It was did a good job of trying to keep it back off the mat. He's got that deep wizard. Hey, look for the outside trip, switches to the single. And then looking to dump it. Looking to negotiate that rear leg edge. Yes, switching to the uh, hand grip. As if Fernandez laced the uh, left leg in between the legs of pain to prevent that. And she's doing a good job of creating space using that inside leg. Able to get past it now, working out of side control. Fernandez just took a deep breath. She's got to look to try to get that left arm that's currently trapped up underneath so she can continue to walk, almost go out the back door with it. Whoa. Just like that, good sweep rollover. Athleticism and explosivity being displayed there by Fernandez. Payne trying to negotiate her way back into the top position. And Payne doing a good job of sweeping that leg and then getting her bum high to try to go out that back door. She's got to make sure she doesn't leave her arm in there. And Payne looking to try to extend that arm out as Payne pops her head out. She's got it wrapped. Fernandez going to get control over that left leg on the body of her opponent here. She has the affordance of the Kimura as well as the armbar in this position. And Payne can pop her head out back now, but she's got to be cognizant of that right arm, whether or not she thinks she can get it past the hips. Fernandez walking up high here. The higher she goes, the more she leans towards armbar territory. And with Payne, if she can get that bum high in the air and pop that head out, she can take the back here. Her arms are not, no, it's not in trouble right here. She can pop that head out and take the back. Last 10 seconds here. But Fernandez doing a good job. She's settled in, controlling where it's at. And the round's gonna end with it. It's a flip of the coin. Previous round, we saw Payne with back control. Although she did have both hooks, but Fernandez finishing the second round in that back position, threatening the uh, Kimura trap position for the armbar. But uh, that's uh, a testament to Fernandez's game to be able to sweep off the cage like that, to use uh, the athleticism and the explosive movements to get back to that top position. And she did it using that underhook. So she actually brought that arm in, and then when she did it, you notice she jumped, like pushed that arm straight to the ceiling. And that's what you always tell everybody, get that underhook to come out the back door. She didn't even need to come out the back door. She used the back door to get that sweep. It was a really nice sweep. Problem was there is as she went to get on top, she rode a little bit high, needed to calm down a little bit, maybe settle in. Lindsay created a scramble right off of that. As we spoke about before, Lindsay with most of her finishes, both of her finishes actually via TKO. And it's in those dominant positions that the TKO are going to present themselves, the side controls, the mounts, the back more so with the chokes, less TKO finishes. But if Lindsay can slice past the guard and get to a dominant position, I believe she's going to have more success there. But Fernandez is doing a good job of creating scrambles whenever she's in that position. So it's not giving Lindsay the opportunity to posture up and land that ground and pound. Double jab, right hand from Fernandez, lands on the money. Eats a leg kick for the troubles. Lindsay looking for the level change. And a great job of a catch went as soon as Lindsay came in by Fernandez. Oh, stiff jab from Fernandez. Level change from Payne. Chasing the single leg, shaken off by Fernandez. And again, Fernandez with that double unders. But there it is again, Lindsay going back to that cage that we had seen before the fights had even started. Did a good job of firing that front leg forward, the right leg in this case of pain in between the legs of her opponent, twisting the hips, twisting the body away from her. It allows her to pin her opponent up against the cage, but she's got to use it to her advantage here. She's got to try and connect the hands and then circle off to the right side, use the inside and outside trips we saw her working in the cage before the event started. And again, she's worked for those double unders now. 
She's gonna look to suck those hips in and either drop it back, elevate, lift up, or look for some kind of trip. Oh, and she pulled it right back on top of herself. She's gotta look to move now. Good job by Fernandez of putting her hips in the right spot. Full guard here for Payne. Fernandez drifting the body down. Can try and the guard's open here. If she can sense that it's open, she can start to cross her up and lay down some punches. And the one thing is the reach now. So she's got to be able to clear those long legs of Lindsay in order to get in. She doesn't have the longest reach in the world, but great job of taking the back here. Fernandez with the left arm underneath the neck here. Can't see it from the camera, but the commentary booth, she's chasing this rear naked choke position. Now yep. I can see it. And she's looking to go gable. Now she's gone deep. It's on the chin. Here I would switch to that gable grip and then look to try to just dig that arm up underneath the chin. Fernandez with just under 50 seconds left to work in this position. Jason for the rear naked choke here. She can try and flatten out Payne as well to give her a better affordability for ground and pound and then the choke. And Payne doing a good job of fighting those hands, but Fernandez looking to completely flatten her out. And she's using that heel to try to push that leg down to continue to flatten her out. The Fernandez. problem is Fernandez is starting to get high here. Yeah, she's starting to fall off. Again, the only affordance really is potentially the back mount triangle, but the right leg's trapped behind the leg. Maybe the armbar, but I think she's going to go for the armbar here, Nick. Yeah, but it, even with that, Payne was able to slip straight through, and now we get into that position where she's got the TKOs in the past. Heavy punches from Payne here. Fernandez wrestling for the top position, arm trapped. Time runs out. An evenly fought fight between the two young ladies. And a good job by both of them towards the end of that fight. Fernandez doing a good job of protecting herself when it came down to it. Payne looking to scramble to get to that dominant position to start throwing this TKO. Take a look at the replay here. There's a lovely stiff jab. Fernandez landed on the money. We saw the, co the contemplation of the uh, level changes here from Payne up against the cage. We saw her drilling. She went for the lift, but this is where she pulled her on top of her. And it was a good job by Fernandez to turn her hips to get back into that dominant position. Payne doing a good job of trying to get back into a guard position from there. Here's Fernandez when she took the back, looking to try to fight to get up underneath the chin. She had that one hook in, but she was riding high to begin with. And here's the end of the fight where Payne had gotten back to that position for ground and pound. Great job by Payne and Fernandez throughout that fight. And again, this fight was brought to you by Industry UK. Send it up to Lee to make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards where they have reached a unanimous decision. Let's hear it for your winner in the red corner, Korensky Fernandez.